afternoon, YouTube, YTPC. How are you all doing? Back in the uh, shed of serenity. Wife's gone up to Freiburg to do a bit of shopping with a friend of hers. And I'm in the shed. <laughs> Finally got my YouTube video working here on the Beamer. But it's a bit complicated because there's several ways you can connect it, you know, and um, but it's got it chiming away here. You'll probably see it there. Smoking Savinelli 2019 Christmas pipe with this lovely white stem in the print shape, which I do favour. It's not the X bowl, but uh, KS king size is big enough. Nine millimeter. Well, good old John Aylesbury came out this year with this very attractive tin. And uh, I've got a shot of that here for you to uh, see the tobacco also more clearly. And I, I think this was uh, the most classic of the Christmas tins this year. Um, you know, you can always argue which is the more beautiful one. And I have ordered the Kohlhaas and Kopp uh, Christmas tobacco, so I'll review that in a week or so when it's arrived and I've tried it with a few bowls. But today we're trying this one. Now this tobacco I got last year as well. I got their uh, Winter Edition 2020. And that one I was a little disappointed with. Um, let me explain what I mean. Uh, for example, I need my glasses, I'm getting older. Mm -hmm. Last year, that tobacco there that I've jarred up had uh, apple sugared orange peel, candiata orange peel, and gingerbread. And, you know, the poet who writes these descriptions is marvelous. And uh, in both these tobaccos, the tin note is really lovely, you know, but we all know with aromatics, they promise so much from the tin note, even the room note is, is very nice with both of these. Not very powerful room note, but you know, it's nice. And uh, the trouble is getting the flavors when you actually smoke it. So last year I found it extremely mild and uh, of the sugared orange peel, hardly could get anything. I got a little bit of the maybe apple uh, and, and a bit of sweetness that could have been gingerbread. So, uh, and basically tobacco was last year was Black Cavendish Virginia, both from the US and from Africa, and a pinch of Burley. So it was Virginia forward because the black Cavendish, you, you see these little strands and they're probably only about 10% of the tobacco. So I was hesitating this year to get this one, but I love the tin so much. 
the, the tin from last year's one looked like this. And my wife has uh, repurposed that as a sewing tin. So I can't show the original, but that's what it was. So they do a great uh, tin art. Actually, just for your information, John Aylesbury is Cole Harzer and Cop again, you know. In fact, almost every Christmas tobacco rat race is Cole Harzer and Cop again. So it's the same outfit, making all these bloody tobaccos, you know. Even Peter Heinrich, somebody told me, is Kohlhaser and Kopp again, you know. Now that's not bad, because Kohlhaser and Kopp are brilliant, and make superb tobaccos. But you wonder, how do they differentiate all these different Christmas blends when they're the ones doing them? Well, they do have different descriptions and different recipes and to a certain extent um, different tobacco proportions of the different tobaccos. So, so I hope for this year to have a step up from what last year was. I will, revert, I will go back to this one in maybe a couple of weeks and see what a, a year and a jar has done for it, because that could have helped it. It could be that you need to smoke your Christmas tobacco two years later, or something like that, or a year later, let's say, rather than fresh. But um, it could be a lot of factors, you know. Uh, I, I found it only in need of very short drying um, straight out of the tin because they come in those cellophane packages in, in an un, un hermetically sealed tin so they probably dry out pretty quickly so never buy one of these Christmas tobaccos six months later when no one else has bought it because or if you do, you'll probably have to rehydrate it a bit. But we shall see with the 2020 what comes out. What about this one? This year's John Aylesbury. Well, I do confess I've only about four or five bottles and normally I like to do at least half a dozen. Lighter today is still Cup of Joe's, which is the same original fuel filling I did a week ago. So in a cool shed, you know, it does last longer. Well, it's, it's easy to smoke. It won't bite you. Um, and the 2021 has uh, my glasses back on <laughs> as brown and black Cavendish I think it has a bit more Cavendish than last year's again this mix of diverse Virginias from Africa and the US and Burley as well probably a bit more Burley in this one than last year and the flavors of this one this year's John Aylesbury are cherry, almond, nougat, and a little bit of cinnamon. So I get more smoke from this year's version. And I think there's a bit more burly in it. I do get a bit of the almond. It's a little tang at the back which could be some fruit, but not particularly sweet. Um, it's a little tang of... Uh, you almost think like a, a fresh cherry off the tree rather than the jam or something which where the flavours are more intense. Not picking up cinnamon much at all. Um, 
not like, for example, in uh, Edward G. Robinson, where you know you can find it. It's 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 there. It's promised, and and it, it's really nice to find something that claims to have cinnamon that actually has it in it. You know, this one I can't really detect it. It's uh, it's certainly you know like an all day smoke kind of uh, Christmas tobacco. I would say that about last year's as well. You know, it's it's very easy on your tongue, and you, you could open up the jar and smoke it all day. That it has, but it's still not very distinguished in the flavour area. Now I will be. Uh, over the next week or so trying this with various drying times and packing levels so that, that could make a difference um, because I do tend to pack it a little heavy and um, you know maybe maybe a quarter of an hour is not enough drying time I should uh, leave it a bit longer because it was a fresh tin and it hadn't sat in the shop very long so they probably overdo the moisture because they know it's only cellophane packing and it might have to sit there a month or two you know and they still want it to be sellable so so that uh, might make a difference if I have to do a, a correction um, I'll let you know but the summary for this one is an almond, almond forward uh, but mild to very mild flavor with a kiss of cherry couldn't find the cinnamon in it um, but um, behaves generally quite well um, and you know no tongue bite at all and it's uh, you know, pleasant enough once you get the smoke going you pick up more of the flavour. I certainly think from the first try out of the tin it's better than last year. Last year's tobacco of course was uh, you know the Kohlhase and Kopp with the, with the rosemary flavour was the best one I've ever tried of those kind of Christmas tobaccos. It's absolutely spectacularly good. Not far behind the rat rays from last year. That was also good. So, due to uh, budget constraints and uh, cutbacks, and my wife watching very closely how much I, I get in boxes with the postman. Uh, I've only bought two of these Christmas tobaccos this year and partly also because I've got for the last two years still jars of ones of Christmas past like this one so I sort of put my foot on the brake but I will try the Kohlhaas and Kopp it has a, a very beautiful uh, tin um, so the tin art is superb my wife likes those tins so that gives you brownie points if your wife likes the attractive tin and can use it for uh, putting sewing buttons and stuff in you know you, you kind of get a, a small credit point there so that's another reason to get it yeah you know it's uh sort of a seven out of Ten or six and a half out of ten, it just about gets into the good category, and uh, I could see myself smoking this quite frequently over Christmas. Um, I've got two jars here. I'm going to take one to the other place, and probably I'll get through that jar uh, this Christmas, which will just leave some for next year to again do these kind of comparisons. <laughs> Well, sitting here in my cosy shed, I'm uh, 
Did you see, by the way, Larry Blackett's new Christmas tampers? Oh, beautiful. The, the Santa Claus and the uh, Kringle one, you know. And then those uh, Christmas uh, Carol series tampers. Oh, I, you know, but again, I, I've got a lot of tampers, so, you know, and I've got the ones he did before, the Christmas... Uh, Father Christmas one, he's got a new one which is really exquisite, uh, more sort of old fashioned style, which I'm tempted, I'm tempted, but um, then I've got the uh, snowman one here as well, but you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, you just cannot keep adding to this collection. Got my uh, Christmas Robin mug and in your honour, I'm going to have some uh, coffee, which I've spiked with a bit of uh, uh, Mauritian rum. We went to Mauritius several years ago and I had a small bottle that we hadn't consumed, so... Uh, I always get this wrong, there we are still warm and I've got exactly a cup full of uh, coffee in this little thermos. This is going to be my supply. The other good thing I think is they put a little bit more Cavendish in this one which creams it you know and smooths it a little bit and uh, So you can you can fairly puff away on this one if you like to do that. I think there's certainly more burly in this one than the previous year. So not to keep it too long today. I hope it give you the heads up on John Aylesbury 2021 winter edition tobacco. I would recommend it um, not not very powerfully, but I would definitely give it one thumbs up, let's put it that way. It's a good all-day Christmas smoke with um, nuances of the right flavours. Should be a little bit stronger in my view, but, but certainly a step up from 2020. Well, you all take care, my dears. Look after yourselves out there and um, hope not many had too big hangovers from uh, Thanksgiving and will recover quickly to start the Christmas festivities. Cheers everyone. Bye bye.